Hey, everybody, and welcome to, I think it's 10 days in a row of videos related to GitHub Actions. So I started this on December 1st, and I wanted to see how many days in a row I could go, and I'm going to be honest with you, I almost missed tonight. I was really kind of tired after work and such, but we're going to push through it. So we're talking GitHub Actions. Again, everything we're talking about here with GitHub Actions is going to help you if you're getting ready, say, for the GitHub Action certification exam, or just trying to do more with GitHub Actions. Now, if you go back to the previous videos in the series, we've covered a lot from the basics of GitHub Actions to running actions on a pull request, running it on a push, composite actions, reusable workflows. So I want to show you one other, or not one other, but another feature that might be helpful for you when dealing with actions, and that's the idea of concurrency. For example, in my previous demo a couple of days ago, when I do a push to main, it triggers a deployment to dev and staging. It does a build and a test and triggers a deployment. But So if I push to main, if I merge my pull request, it does a deployment. But then let's say my friend Josh does a push to main short 10 seconds later. By default, it's going to start his workflow running as well, which is also going to do a deployment. And depending on factors, you know, mine might deploy to dev, but his might get deployed to staging before mine. And then it, then I might overwrite his, and then he might overwrite mine and dev. So it's it can be a very confusing and could lead to misunderstandings and just general confusion with the code. So what we want to do is to be able to implement for certain pipelines, like deployment pipelines, we want to be able to implement concurrency. So the way we implement concurrency is we have a concurrency keyword and a couple of settings for it, but it's going to work in one of two ways. The first way is if I have a pipeline running and I start another pipeline that has the same concurrency value as this first pipeline, the second pipeline will pause and it will wait till the first one finishes and then it will run. The other way I can configure it is this first pipeline is running. The second pipeline starts. It has the same concurrency. The first pipeline just stops, and the second pipeline starts running. So let's look at that in a couple of different ways in an actual demo. All right, so let's flip over. So as usual, here we are in our demo repository. So github.com slash devopselvis slash my GitHub Actions presentation. This is a public repo. All of these demos are available to you. You can go download this repo. Um, I'm working on instructions on how to even have it set up the Azure part of the repository for you. So go use it. Feel free to use it. Feel free to contribute back. Now, if we go into the GitHub folder, the .github folder, and we go into the workflows folder, we have our workflow from the previous video, which was on reusable workflows. And, but what I want to call your attention to is the keyword concurrency. So if I want to implement concurrency on my workflow, then at the workflow level, I specify the keyword concurrency. Then I need to give this workflow a group name. Now this is important because this is going to determine whether you have another workflow with the same concurrency value, in this case group name, running at the same time. So I could put just Mickey here if I wanted to, but then that would basically automatically make this work or block for every workflow that I run. Usually you, you make it with some kind of variable. So like in this case, I did a push default and deploy with reusable workflow, and then I'm using the GitHub ref. So I'm using the reference branch. This means that if I kick this workflow off on, if this workflow is running, say against the main branch, and I kick off another workflow, same workflow running on the main branch, then the concurrency groups would be the same. But if one of these workflows was running against the dev branch and the other was running against a feature branch, those would be two different refs, so therefore the group name would not be the same. 
So the group name is what initially says, oh, I have another workflow in the same concurrency group running, so I need to do something. And then we have two options here. We have cancel in progress true or cancel in progress false. So the cancel in progress true means that if we start a second workflow, the first one is just going to stop. So let's, we can see that by coming out here to Actions and by selecting the Push and deploy, Default Deploy with Reusable Workflow. And we start this running against the main branch. And we'll give it just a moment to let you see that it's up and running here. We'll go into it for just a moment. All right, so it's up and running. That's reusable workflow, that's number 11. So now, if I select that same workflow and I kick it off again, what we're going to see here is the number 11 one was canceled. And we can see here that it was canceled because a higher priority request for push, default, and deploy exists. So we made it through the, the first job, but before we could run the other jobs, we basically we canceled the entire workflow, so we canceled all the jobs. And so now this one's going to run. So we'll cancel this run for now. So what is it? So that's what it looks like when you have that um, that value set to true. So that if one existing one is running, it's going to kill it and just start the new one. So what does it look like if you have it set to false? So first off, let's make sure that this one is stopped. It has perfect. So let's go back to our code here, and let's actually go to our actual workflow code. So we'll go to .github, we'll go to workflows, we'll go to push default and deploy. Well, let's make a change. And let's set this to false. And we're just going to push to main because we can. Because I have the power. Now by pushing to main, it automatically kicked off that workflow. So let's let that workflow start. Again, that's workflow 13. So we can see that's spinning, so the workflow is running. So let's select the workflow over here, and while that's running, let's start up a new one. Now when we had that set to true, it would have killed 13 and started 14. So now if we have this set to false, what we're going to see is 13 is, oh, let's get that out of the way, 13 is still running. It is, even though I'm zoomed in. But 14 is now in a wait state. And if we go look at 14, it tells us that it's in a wait state because it is waiting for this one to finish running before it can start running. So how do you decide which version of concurrency to implement? Right? How do you decide, do I implement uh, cancel in progress true or cancel in progress false? depends on your process, but you need to know that both of those are available and it's all keyed off of this group name, whatever you set this group name to be. And there you go. That's concurrency. Pretty simple, but highly effective. So it's something you want to consider, especially with deployment workflows, to make sure that you don't have deployments that accidentally clobber each other. Thanks for watching.